Timeouts is one of the most popular parenting tips that is suggested when children act aggressively or inappropriately. However, in this video, we will share why scientists say timeouts are bad for kids long term. I am Dr. Tanisha Burke, your positive parenting coach. And welcome to our channel where we discuss the latest research and best practices in parenting, child development and supporting the family. Parenting is a challenging job and parents often resort to different disciplinary practices to correct their children's problem behaviors. One such practice is the use of timeouts where a child is separated from the parent or the caregiver for a brief period. However, the latest research in neuroscience and parenting suggests that timeouts can be harmful to the parent-child relationship, connection, and children's socio-emotional development. In this video, we'll explore why some scientists argue against using timeouts and propose alternative parenting options that promote healthy growth and emotional well-being. The first argument against timeout is that timeouts can cause anxiety and depression in kids. So a study conducted by the National Institute of Mental Health found that timeouts are effective in getting toddlers to cooperate but only temporarily and that it is associated with anxiety and depression long term. The second argument against timeouts is that it can leave children feeling isolated and angry. Some scientists argue that timeouts are often ineffective and leave children angrier than they were before. They suggest that the primary experience a timeout offers a child is isolation. The third argument against timeouts is that it can damage the parent-child relationship and connection. Timeouts can be perceived as a rejection by the child, which can damage their relationship and their connection that they have with their parent. The fourth argument against timeout is that it does not improve behavior. A study conducted by the National Institute of Mental Health concluded that timeouts are effective in getting toddlers to cooperate, but only temporarily. This study found that timeouts do not improve behavior in the long term. The fifth argument is that timeouts lead to missed learning opportunities. Advocates and researchers have argued that timeouts are missed opportunity to guide children through their mistakes and to help them understand the consequences of their actions. Engaging in open conversations about the behavior can foster a deeper understanding of right and wrong. The sixth argument against timeout is as it relates to underlying issues. Children's behaviors often stem from underlying issues such as frustration, unmet needs, or emotional distress. Timeouts focus on addressing the behavior rather than the root causes, potentially leading to a recurring cycle of misbehavior. The seventh and final argument against timeout is a lack of emotional regulation. Timeouts are often used as a way to help children calm down and reflect on their behavior. However, critics argue that sending a child to a designated space when they're upset might not teach them how to manage their emotions effectively. Instead, it could inadvertently reinforce negative emotions and isolation. So parents might be wondering, if I can't do timeouts, what can I do instead? In the remainder of this video, we will look at alternative positive parenting options that you can use to address misbehavior in your children. The first alternative to timeouts is actually time in. While some experts still recommend timeouts as an effective parenting strategy, the latest research suggests that time ins may be a better alternative. Time ins involve a parent or caregiver staying with a child and helping them to regulate their emotions and behavior. That's the major difference. Time out, the child is in isolation by themselves. Time in, you stay with the child as you help them to regulate their emotions. Time ins can help build a stronger parent-child relationship and connection, which can have long-term benefits for the child's socio-emotional development. The second alternative is emotional coaching. Instead of isolating a child during times of distress, parents can engage in emotional coaching. This involves acknowledging the child's feelings, empathizing with them, and helping them understand and express their emotions in healthy ways. The third alternative is to take a break together. Parents can take a break with their child to help them calm down and regulate their emotions. 
The fourth alternative is to ask questions. Parents can ask their child questions to help them understand their behavior and find a solution together. For example, what do you think will happen when you hit your brother with a toy? Do you think it will hurt? Would you want to be hurt? Can you tell me what makes you so mad? These are questions that you can ask your child to get them to start thinking more about their behavior and potential repercussions. The next alternative is to read a story. You can read a story to your child to help them understand the consequences of their behavior. There are lots of books that focus on socio-emotional development and focus on different problematic behaviors that you can read to your children to get them to get a better understanding of the repercussions of their behavior. The sixth alternative is to give two choices, no more than two choices. If you do more than that, the child becomes overwhelmed and it becomes difficult for them to make a choice. So you give your child two choices to help them to feel empowered and more in control of the situation. So they're less likely to become dysregulated. The next alternative is to listen to a song. You can play a calming song to help your child to regulate their emotions. Music is very beautiful with this and it is it works effectively for very small children and even the older ones but it's really good for small children. The eighth alternative is to create a chill out spot. You can create a space where your child can go to calm down and have some space alone until they feel ready to talk or return to being with others and this space can have like their favorite books, their favorite toys, their favorite music. It's important that the child volunteers to go to this chill out spot and you as a parent is not forcing them to go. The minute you force your child to go, it is a form of punishment and it's a form of isolation and disconnection from the child because the child wants to stay with you. And then you, you create a disconnection by sending them there when they do not want to go there. The chill out spot should be a voluntary space where the child goes when they say, I need a break from everybody. To feel better and I will rejoin the group when I'm okay. The ninth and final suggestion is to model behavior. Children learn by observing their caregivers. Displaying the behaviors and emotional regulation you want them to adapt can have a profound impact on their development. As the landscape of parenting advice evolves, it's crucial to critically evaluate traditional approaches like timeouts. While these methods were once widely accepted, experts are increasingly recognizing the potential drawbacks and limitations of using timeouts as a disciplinary tool. By embracing alternative approaches that can focus on emotional development, communication, and understanding, parents can foster healthier relationships with their children and contribute to their long-term emotional well-being. Remember, every child is unique, so tailoring your parenting approach to your child's individual needs is the key to their growth and happiness. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more positive parenting content, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future episodes. If you have friends and family who may benefit from the content, please also share it with them. And don't forget to leave your comments in the comments section. Thank you so much for joining us and goodbye for now.